Hi. Hello. Ni hao. To see here. I am about to share with you the top 10 embarrassing moments of my life. Like those ones I call my toes. I like my blood gets hot when I think about them.
Hi. Ni hao. Welcome to Tosi's channel through Tosi's lens. Subscribe if you haven't. Please. Again, I'll say subscribe to join my small YouTube family because we're a family and we want to grow together. Yep, that was me taking yogurt because I was hungry and I forgot to take it before applying this lipstick to come here and shoot this video. And anyway, I always forget to not apply lipstick. Even when I'm going out nowadays and I have to put on a mask, it's the only makeup I do. So whenever I'm applying, that's when I remember, oh, you will have a mask on and my lipstick is not those high end that won't transfer to whatever piece of clothing that you put on your face um yeah so i think it's been a while yes with no serious shooting because i think the last videos i've done were with my phone and there were nothing serious really it was just me enjoying myself trying out new stuff but this one-on-one -on -one kind of thing it's been quite a while before we did it so um what type of uh, what what type of leaves hey, hey. what type of <laughs> what type of leaves <laughs> Which brand of lipstick do you people use that don't, that leave that matte feel? Like it doesn't transfer, it doesn't shine, it's just like your lips, but in a different color. Let me know your recommendations and probably I'll try them out. Yeah, and then, oh, I went out today and I realized that most people are out there doing their thing normally. In fact, I went to the mall today. It's not the mall, but to a mall, capital center, and we were just going to shop some groceries because we didn't do that yesterday. And I realized that even kids are being brought out nowadays and life seems to be back to normal. I hope everyone is just practicing the safety measures that have been put out there for everyone to observe. Yeah, and then, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's what I just had to, you know, fill you in on and then, is that even a phrase, fill you in on? Forever. Let's get into today's content, which is um, the things that to date I feel embarrassed about. The cringeworthy moments of my life. Top 10, at least those I can remember. And those that really keep, oops, those, those that really keep me awake all night when I think about yeah so I have written them down so that I just get to share all of them with you people and um, yeah we have them there are 10 cringeworthy moments of my life but before we get into this most embarrassing moments of my life, I wanted to share with you something that I read about embarrassing moments. So, the internet calls them um, cringe attacks. Yes, you can Google embarrassment or cringe and how to, you know, to avoid it embarrassing moments how to avoid leaving those embarrassing moments you can google them and you will read a lot on it 
So I'm just here to share with you certain things that really struck me that I feel like we all need to know to live normally and not worry much about, you know, when you feel embarrassed about a certain event in the past or a certain feeling, then you you won't have to bring yourself down. You won't have to, you know, feel that bad feeling again and again and again in your life. So it says, cringe attacks are normal, but you can break out of the cycle. Yes. And why do you have those cringe attacks is because listen the brain processes those moments each at a time the brain gives it attention more attention than they actually deserve it's like you're focusing more on those worst parts and feeling self-conscious and feeling like you lost control of your life at that moment so the best thing to deal with them is to not focus on that one embarrassing moment but to relieve the whole event like the events prior to you feeling so embarrassed and afterwards probably having a full picture of what happened will help you focus on not only that embarrassing moment but also on other phases of that moment that probably were not embarrassing here yeah. they say relieve the entire memory not just the worst part you keep focusing on Another thing, you put it in perspective. Yes. Normally, you would feel like you need to suppress those memories. But it's not the best. The best thing is to play back the whole scene so you don't always stop at the most terrifying point. I think it's almost the same as the first one. Then, the third thing to do is to look for the silver lining. Like, put a fresh spin on your track. Yes. The other one is remind yourself you are in a different place now. Yes. Then, we have... Yes, I think those are the few that really struck yeah so don't feel bad about yourself try and do something about it and for me the reason why i'm sharing those moments is to not feel bad about myself but just learn from them and move on with life like nothing happened knowing that i am in a better position right now i am in a position to do better make better choices if given the opportunity to and to also focus on the me at the moment yes so let's get into the 10 most embarrassing moments of my life i am blushing if I were light skin, like white or different color, you would see the red thing. But why don't we have red faces? We like people of color. When I blush, I bet nobody will notice that I blushed. Unless if I start looking down and all. But just on my face, being red faced and all that, I don't think it happens to us. Yeah, let's get into this the first one my dance the final dance i did at my pre-wedding bash goodness there was a night i remembered that and i couldn't sleep and it's not been happening once but so many times 
every time and I don't know what brings it back but every time I think about it I just feel like I want to bury my head underground yeah nothing it was nothing awkward about it but since I have two left feet I feel like I just overdid it and it wasn't cool but you know what we learn how to dance we will practice and we won't feel bad about it anymore yeah the second one also has to do with dancing it was during this summer camp I was teaching in a school in Guangdong province in China yeah summer camps is where kids just have um, like tuition so I was teaching English and towards the end of the summer camp I was asked if I could you know dance to some song for the kids it was like a party or something so it wasn't also the best because the dancing stars I showed nobody has ever seen them in this world in future if I have the the guts to share it I will the video of that day of all this rather because I think I might be having snippets of those moments somewhere in my files. The third one is it was also at a summer camp but a different school, a different year. I was teaching also English to students who I think they were middle school kids, yeah. And it was also the end of the summer camp session uh, party and I was asked to sing. I had crowned to the song. I knew all my lines. The problem is with my voice. Jeez, I can't sing to save my life. So for me to have sung and it was recorded, I feel like huh? I was totally embarrassing, honestly. But we live and learn and love. The fourth, um, it's still in China. Men, most of these are when I was in China, and I think it's because I was still growing up. So, this was, uh, it was my friend's birthday, and I had organized with my other friends to surprise her. So, my other friends were already in the venue and I was now alone trying to make sure my the birthday girl didn't know what was going on and I had to take her to the venue. So I relieving those moments makes me feel like I just tried too much. I might not have considered the whole um event how it was going to happen before so it was like trying to rush trying to do everything all at once and i really feel bad i'm not really sure she enjoyed that surprise but it was all out of love though i feel like i really tried too much yeah so that was it the fifth one is dating in the past but i feel embarrassed when i just think about the relationships i had i would say how many but it it was childish it was just you know it's like you you playing games and now that I am married and having dated my husband for so long I feel like what I was doing back then was just a waste of time yeah the reason why I feel bad that I even did that yep the next one still in China it's this one they would have called the fashion police on me honestly if they had the chance to 
um, I was attending a friend's birthday again, a different friend. So I had bought a dress and I had some new tights too. So I wanted, you know, to, you, you need to wear clean, fresh, new if you can, clothes to events, to birthdays, to celebrations. So I was like, ha, ah, I'm wearing the the the, toe, the dress had black and white patterns, the tights had blue, screaming blue, very bright blue and white patches, flowery. It was actually flowery. Uh, what do you call flowery dresses? Well, yeah, the name. So I <laughs> I dressed and we went. I look back at pictures of that and I was like, Rosie, don't ever do this again. I remember a friend of mine commented on it, but I was like, ha, huh, this is the new fashion, you know, but it didn't hit me until way later that <laughs> it was bad. The next one, um, we are on the sixth. Yeah, the next one still in China is I did experiment. I did experiment with some creams. I used to have very bad skin, especially on my face. It's better now. And um, I went to Guangzhou at some point in my during my stay in China, and I bought creams that I was told would help to clear out my dark spots. Little did I know that these creams were bleaching creams. The very one I remember is Pharaoh White. I became white. And I used to apply it on my whole body because I was like, hmm, this cream is good. So little by little from my current skin tone I was lighter. Like it was definitely bleached. I think it took me almost a year and a half, if not two, to realize that I was damaging my skin in the name of trying to get rid of, you know, acne caused um, black spots. And so I stopped and thankfully my skin gradually went back to its original color. I look at myself right now and I'm like, to see. What was that? What was that? Yeah. The other one. This one was still in China. I think this was during my last year in college. So, <laughs> there was a time there was an earthquake in southern, southwest China. Chongqing is part of the southwest China. So, um, it didn't really affect us, but we felt the tremors. So, I was in my room with a friend who had slept over. And that morning, we started feeling the shaky effect everywhere, the bed and all stuff that was in the room was shaky. Then my friend, the one I was telling you guys we had planned a surprise birthday for her, called me immediately we felt the tremors. She called and she was saying, hey, to see I'm coming over. And I understood because she lives, she lived in a very tall building. She was living out, out of campus. So she called and she was saying, hey, I'm coming. And I was like, ha, it has beaten each other. <laughs> so I actually freaked out because I knew she was going to find out that the other friend, by the way, that friend was male, had slept over and he was in my room. So I really freaked out, but I was like, ah, there's no problem. And then this new friend says, you know what, I gotta go. That 
least when it hit me oh shit it is really that bad she doesn't she doesn't have to find out this happened and this guy is really freaking out that we're going to be caught so he decided to use the back door of the it was a hotel that had been changed to be a hostel so he was going to use the back door and then yeah leave while my lady friend was coming so the funny thing is he forgot his keys well on his way out he forgot his keys so when my friend arrived she didn't notice anything and i hope she did but probably this is the time now to tell the truth so there were keys on my like bedside table so i took the keys and pretended i was going to warm food for the both of us for breakfast and went towards the back side where my male friend was going to live through to pretend that i was warming the food and giving him the keys it was just that bad like, oh, oh, what was i thinking why why hindsight i mean i was a grown-up If that friend of mine is watching, it's gonna get bad. But you know, we live and learn and continue with life. Yeah. Then um, there's this last one about China. I was leaving China for Kenya and I was cold. Like, I had extra luggage and I didn't have RMB anymore. So, I asked a friend who was in Chongqing to send me some cash and I'll refund them when I get to Kenya, which I did. But now, I had already paid a thousand RMB for the extra kgs, but my hand luggage was still overweight. So, I think there are Nigerian 411 guys at the airport who are collaborating with police or something. Quattro Bayun Airport, man. They told me, hey, give us a hundred dollars. I had dollars, so I gave them a hundred dollars and they told me we will send this, we will give it to someone. To so they said, I give them a hundred dollars and they will find someone to help me carry it. Somebody who was in the same flight with me. I was like, oh, cool. Here is a hundred dollars. Here is the, ex the luggage that I removed actually and they put it no this was the story they told them, me if i had a hand luggage and a backpack like a carry-on and a backpack I, you get the drift i had a backpack and the suitcase both were carry-ons so they said give us this this bigger one we give it to someone it's like oh cool and that suitcase had everything that i had bought as gifts to my people in kenya my friends, I mean, it just, and everything new that I had just bought. I gave them the money and the luggage, so they gave it to this guy. I don't even remember his face, but he looked Indian or something, and they gave it. So we are following each other. This guy is in front and I'm behind. When they reached this, like, where you now go into the boarding area, the police stopped him. The guards, I don't know if they were police or guards, they stopped him and now he had to leave my suitcase. Can you imagine? And then I am telling these guys, when I have already paid for extra luggage, the bag is mine, yes, but I am carrying too much and I have graduated, I am leaving China forever from my country. But they couldn't hear none of that, so I just had to leave. I actually opened my suitcase and just threw some of the stuff out until they could lift it and feel like it's, it's weightless because I had nothing left in there. It was really bad. I don't know, I'm not a good storyteller and telling this is just not good enough, but you get it. That was my cold story. I was called of a hundred dollars. Another thing I'm so embarrassed about and when I Think about it I really cringe is the videos I shot in the past I used to have another YouTube channel before this and I had to just privatize all of it because man those videos
<laughs> and the reason nowadays I even take longer to upload is because I look at a video while editing and I'm like, is this good enough? Is it what I really want? But you know what? I'll keep sharing. I don't really focus on the negatives anymore. Especially with Mandarin Chinese, with Tosi uploads, I'll just upload and make sure I share knowledge as much as I can. The last one, yes, the last one, going blank at an interview. I, I had attended the same, um, what is it, what are they called? The very first one, I was good, like I asked all the questions, but unfortunately, I was not taken. I think because I was lacking a certificate that they needed. The second time I applied and I got the job, I was called, I was shortlisted. I had my certificates this time around, but I was working and my job at that time was very demanding, so I didn't really have time to prepare. But I was like, ah, if I asked the very first interview, what will stop me from you know getting this job this time around I was wrong so I was half prepared let me just say and I expected to get a job funny enough so when I went in they asked me the very first questions and I was like ah I know this I know that so when I answered until the last guy asked the final question something I knew I knew it but it totally, the answer to the question totally couldn't just come out. Yeah. So those are my 10 most embarrassing moments of my life to date. I hope you learned something from me. And you know what we say? You live, learn, and love. And forget about the negativity. Focus on what drives you forward. Thank God you're alive and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Have yourself a lovely day. It's almost evening here, so if you're on the same um, time zone with me, have a lovely evening. If you're not, have yourself a good time. Thank you. Bye. forgot one last one there was this time we were playing a match a volleyball match i told you guys in this video but i love volleyball so badly so we had gotten to the provincial levels and i knew deep down in me that we were going to win this so when we lost i cried like cry my eyes were just what tears I didn't expect to be beaten when you were just this inch away from the national. So I cried and my our volleyball coach came laughing. Like I couldn't even believe it. Yes, I was I was the booster and I knew I had made mistakes in there that probably did cost us the win. But he laughed and I was like, why? This can't be. So, my sister, rest in peace, Kosi, she was in the team as a sub. She was trying to console me. And she was like, you know what? It's not the end of it. I was in form three then. Or form two. I think form two. Yeah, because Kosi was still in school, so I was in form three. So, um, this teacher laughed so badly. Whenever I think about it, I'm like, why was I even crying? It was just a match. Why cry? But I know the passion for volleyball that is in me. Like, crazy. Yeah, so that was a bonus. Keep it here.
faced this issue lately. It's not really something new, but it keeps happening. Probably it happens today. We don't hear about it for another week. Then it happens again. It goes quiet. I mean, police brutality is just becoming something else in our country. And I really hope something will be done. The IG National Police Service should just do something with those policemen. My condolences to the families of those who lost their lives, of those who lost their lives previously. It's really sad. And I wonder what can be done. Is it just about wisdom or there's something? Like are these people, they can't really tell when to shoot and not to shoot. Why do they have to just, you know, take people's lives in the name of keeping peace and all this? Or maintaining law and order, enforcing, I don't know. That's sad. And all of us should just speak out against police. I know there are good policemen and women out there, but the few rotten eggs really spoil the whole tree. Yep. Hope things will change for the better though.